was a little bit of that anyway. I mean, I think people that were tending to go toward that with when, you know, you just think about Amaz the success of Amazon and, and Netflix and those kinds of things, there was already that trend happening. And this just, you know, kind of set us up for not having a choice anymore about it, that we were going to have to do it that way. And, and I think there are people who are thankful for that. And then there are people who are really struggling with it, but at least, we have the ability to navigate both sides of that fence now. And when will we ever go back to the way it was before? I, I don't know. It's hard to say. I think for some people, uh, you know, even in the world of divorce um, specifically, this has come to light that, for example, in a situation where you've got a high conflict divorce going on, mediators are finding that people are actually handling mediation better when they don't have to physically be in the presence of their sp soon to be ex, uh, especially if there's any kind of toxic nature in the relationship or, or any kind of abuse, um, that they're actually able to make more progress with people in mediation virtually than by forcing them to be in the same room together. And so it's kind of an interesting play on, you know, one of the things that I learned as a communications major was the importance of nonverbal communication. And, you know, how much of, I think it's what 94% or something like that of our communication is nonverbal. And so oftentimes we think about the importance of being in person to communicate well. And in this case, it's almost like it's been proven that in some situations, it's actually better to remove some of that and, and to have a little bit more of a, you know, more of the, uh, nonverbal, uh, focus so that people aren't forced to physically be in the presence of somebody that's intimidating to them. So 